We're now joined by Annabella Lewin. How are you? I'm good. Fantastic. Good, Great to see you. As I was reminiscing, I was at that first big arena show, and I know you played clubs, mm -hmm. but with the Pretenders, it was the big show at Poly Pavilion at UCLA. Poly Pavilion. Yeah. yeah. So you yeah. did a whole national tour, I guess, with Chrissy Hine and well, that was, the Pretenders. That was the original band. We, I know. James Honeyman yeah. Scott was excellent. So sad he passed away. Sure. Um, but yeah, that was uh, only four shows we got to do, I think. Okay. I think, I think it was four shows, but we also uh, went to Japan. Um, which I have fond memories of playing in Japan in 19, mm. 1982, I believe it was, with Amazing. Chrissy Hind and the Pretenders. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Lovely lady she is. Sure. Now, did that gig come through your record company, or how? who knew who to make that happen? Well, we were Booking signed agents? to a label called RCA. Okay. Because that's how we got um, we got a, our first record deal was with RCA, Yeah. which was through our manager, Malcolm McLaren. Yes. And he had apparently, well, obviously now I know his history, but... Yeah. Um, at the time, he, you know, I didn't know anything about Malcolm, but he was uh, the manager for the Sex Pistols, and mm -hmm. he, um, before that, he was he had a dabbling with the New York Dolls, mm -hmm. which I would hazard a guess that's probably why he ended up, ma you know, managing the Sex Pistols because yeah. it was a similar kind of thing, similar right. but not the same. Um, and of course, we were, I guess, the next band okay. after oh, after he obviously met Adam from Adam and the Ants, yes, who had asked him to work. Uh, to give him some, you know, some ideas, I guess. Now, how did they find you? How did Malcolm find you? And how did it become that Adams, Adam and the Ant, so to speak, their group became Bow Wow Wow? Um, well, it was actually Adams' drummer and bass player, uh, drummer and guitar player, that uh, were in the the band. And I think the bass player had just been auditioned, mm -hmm. and he'd been there a week, and mm -hmm. did a show. Um, I was told by some different people that were around at the time. I wasn't there, so I can't comment, but I'm only going by what I was told by those who were. And then I came along after they'd auditioned a girl singer who was an English girl. Mm -hmm. She had short red hair, which is kind of funny. Um, but she was standing behind the mic when I went for my audition. And um, the rest is history, really. I did, a, I did, did an audition, and uh, that was... So that you one. heard about an ad, or they... Malcolm found you in a in a shop. No, I was in a I was doing a, a dry cleaning job. I was working <laughs> every Saturday to get pocket money because mm -hmm. I was um, a child of, of you know um, single parents. So it was kind of difficult because she didn't have enough money to give us pocket money, my mum. So we ended up you know I ended up going off to get um, a Saturday job to get some pocket money. And I used to sing along, they used to have the radio on every Saturday, and they mm -hmm. used to run down the top 40 of the hits in the charts. Mm. And that's how I was singing to the radio, because he was coming in, the guy that was working for Malcolm, came in to, um, you know, come in to see, see what he could drop off to get cleaned, I guess. Sure, yeah. sure. So now, obviously you were very young, you were 14 at the mm -hmm. time? Mm -hmm. Now, what was your first impressions of, you know, joining this band? It must have been very new to you. Obviously, you enjoyed music. Yeah, I love music. But what was, what was your first impressions? And obviously, like you say, as we know later about Malcolm, he was quite the character. Malcolm McLaren was a fascinating individual. Um, sorry, what was the question? I oh, I just, already. you know, what was it like to be a 14-year-old? Now, all of a sudden, you're in a, you know, a rock band. Um... Well, it was a bit of a helter-skelter ride is the only way I can liken it to. I wasn't um, experienced <laughs> in the world of music, and mm -hmm. um, I was learning as I was going along, I guess. So it was kind of crazy. It was a crazy world yeah. you know, to, to, to be in, really, in a lot of ways. And what was it like to enter the studio where, again, rather than a, a live situation where you were performing with a band, it was very... Um, you know, calculated in a sense to set up and, and sing parts. Would did that become natural for you or was that hard to adapt to? Um, well I I kind of thought that um it was all part normal to go into a studio at, you know, twelve o'clock at night <laughs> because I didn't have any experience. So everything that I was doing was for the first time. And um it was a little strange the things that were suggested to me at the time. Uh, more than strange on a few occasions, actually, but um, 
I ended up really, you know, just just doing pretty much what I was told because I mm -hmm. was a teenager. Mm -hmm. You know, I was you, I was 14, 15, yeah. 16, and we were busy working all the time. It was like every day there was something going on, and I was still at school before I, you know, decided I I wanted to do this for real because um, I was actually still at school and I was trying to do my lessons during the day then I'd go to rehearsal in the evening and then I'd be very tired the next day so it was one of those situations where I felt that I had to um, you know I had to kind of just keep working with the band to see if I really wanted to continue singing because I love singing that wasn't the issue I always love singing yeah. but I actually didn't know I didn't know if I wanted to do it full time, as it were. I didn't know if it was something I would just give up everything to do. Do, mm. do you know what I mean? Sure, sure. So that was the difficulty. Now, had, um, had the Sex Pistols already broken up at this point? Was Malcolm more focused on you guys? Well, apparently, um, do you know any history about the Sex Pistols yes. at all? You must know mm -hmm. a little bit, because it was yeah. quite a famous story. Um, John, John Lydon was the lead singer, and he wrote the songs too, and Glenn Matlock was the original bass player. Mm -hmm. And um, I understand that the the other guy that was in the band, um, Sid Vicious, died. So obviously once he died, I guess they didn't have anywhere else to go. And by that point, um, Malcolm, I think, was kind of like looking to do other things. Because mm -hmm. he was first and foremost, he was a you know he was a very great ideas man. He had lots of ideas about everything. So it wasn't as if uh, you know it wasn't as if he was like, well, what do we do now? You know, he actually was like, well, we should try this. He was very you know fascinating and interesting. He always had great ideas. I thought. Hmm. Mm. Now, obviously, a lot of controversy from some of the songs. The uh, EP cover, Last of the Mohicans. Mm -hmm. Did they tell you that this was a reenactment of the famous painting? Is that yes. how? So the idea of the Dejeuner sur l'herbe came from Malcolm McLaren, who was trying to put together a um, an album cover for us, and he thought it would be a good idea to recapture something that was from the past, but bringing it forward mm -hmm. to the present. So I guess instead of you know it being a painting, it would be real people, and that's how. You know, he put it on. He put it to me that it would be um, a, a very artistic expression um, done in a tasteful way, and that's how he mm -hmm. put it to me. Mm -hmm. so. Now, obviously, um, the band had a lot of like tribal rhythms. There was a, definitely a lot of, you know, interesting percussion. Yes. You know, in the group. Yes, there were. Yeah. Is 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 that something you you enjoyed? You naturally. Um, adapted to that or was that kind of different for you when you heard that? Well I, I was auditioned on a song called C30 so the very first time I heard it I was hooked really I mean it was a great song and um, it was about home taping which is what I was already doing mm -hmm. I was taping off the radio you know because I couldn't get records I couldn't afford to buy too many I was given my first single for free which was one of my favorite songs actually a song by Andy, Andrew Gold yeah. Beautiful song. Anyway, you never let it slip away. It was cool, but um, I ended up um, <coughs> I ended up uh, pretty much, you know. I'm sorry, I forgot the question. No problem. So you, th as far as the tribal drumming, this was something that you uh, supported. Became very much part of the signature sound of the band. Yeah, the, the sound was a mixture, a combination of Burundi and kind of Latin. Apparently the guys had been listening to the music uh, of different, uh, I don't know, different influences. I wasn't there, so I can't really comment, but um, the musicians were working on music. And by the time I got together with them, they had C30, mm -hmm. which was officially the first song. Right. So now... When when the band came together, obviously Matthew was was the guitarist, mm -hmm. and Matthew Ashman, yeah, yeah, and and he had his tragic tragic loss. And I know you guys did a 50, 15 year anniversary in London S for Scarlet, his passing. We had a, a tribute concert for him. It was also in aid of diabetes, 
we helped to raise money for the Diabetic Association, mm. which was the only agreement I made. I would only get together to do that for that reason, as well as obviously, you know, because Ma Matthew had passed away. But that was in 1995, Matthew had passed away, and the band had already split up way before that. Okay. So it wasn't like, he, you know, he'd, he went off to form another band. That's how I got... That's pretty much what happened was in... Um, we were on this grueling, you know, set of tours and just going from one thing to another to another. And um, I remember that uh, we were told we had a month off and I was like really looking forward to just resting and not singing and just not talking actually. And um, what ended up happening was uh, I got a call from the manager guy who was saying that, you know, the band had decided to go off and do something else. And I'm like, what are you talking about? We're recuperating. He said, no, they've, they've kicked you out. You're going to have to find your own own thing to do. And I said, I have no idea what you're talking about. I was in shock, you know. Um, and then the rest is kind of like history. I don't want to go into all the ins and outs. But sure. uh, what ended up happening was I was already signed to the record label at the time, RCA. Um, they're no longer existent because every all the companies have merged. Mm -hmm. But um, I was signed to the label and they said, you have to do an album. And I said, what do you mean I have to do an album? They said, you're signed and you're committed and you have to do an album. And I said, well, I'm not ready. I'm just, I'm going through, I need sort of some time out, you know. And that's pretty much what happened, yeah. Yeah. Now, I Want Candy, obviously, big, big breakthrough for you, especially here in America with the um, MTV video in, on the beach. And Kenny Laguna, who, of course, works hand in hand with Joan Jett, produced that. Um, what is your story about coming to record that song? And were you familiar with the original? Had you ever heard it before? Or Yeah, that's, that's really all that happened. They played me the song um, from The Strange Loves. And I immediately went, well, we're going to have to change the lyrics because it's a guy singing about a girl. You know, because it wasn't right. It was about, well, it was, it was a lovely song. It's just that it was a guy singing about a girl. And I couldn't kind of get my head wrapped around how to um, portray it. But um, Kenny Laguna helped, and uh, the next thing I know, I'm in the studio singing the song, um, and it was just a beautiful, beautiful song. As soon as I heard it, I mean, when I first heard I Want Candy, after they had produced the song, finished producing and mixing it, I was really amazed that it was me singing it. I actually didn't believe it was me singing it. Cause I really didn't. I actually went, is that me singing? Is that really me? Did you get a singer in whilst mm. I wasn't around? Because what happened was, I, up until that point, I'd been screaming and shouting and jumping around, um, which I kind of still do to a certain degree. But the point being, I wasn't actually a trained singer. So I was pretty much going, you know, shouting and screaming mm -hmm. lyrics. Because I was, uh, it was a lot of stuff was quite angry. You know, it was kind of coming out of that punk rock era. Mm -hmm. And Malcolm McLaren had kind of put together lyrics in such a way that required me to, you know, uh, speak or shout. You know, it wasn't very much singing and melodic, which I loved anyway. I was automatically into singing, pretty much. Um, so that's kind of where all that came from. And that shock, not shock, that surprise, it's more of a surprise to me when I heard I Want Candy, um, was like, because I didn't actually believe that it was me singing it. So I'm really glad that um, everyone liked it so much. Yeah. You know, I and you really remember the first time you... to the American audience. Yes. Do you remember yeah. the first time you saw it on MTV? Um, the video was incredible. That was a whole other, like, experience. Mm. It was very surreal in a way. Shot it on was, the East Coast? Where? Um, it was shot in Venice. Okay. In Venice, Los Angeles, California, oh. and also a place called Death Valley, which was, um, well, it was in the desert, you know. Mm -hmm. It's a long way. Mm. Amazing. Now, I know at one point um, over the course of the years, uh, Adrian Young from No Doubt, who was a fan of the group, became your drummer for a while. What was it like working with Adrian? He was great. I loved working with Adrian. He was <laughs> super, super nice and uh, fun to work with. Yeah. He's a really nice chap. <laughs> and uh, he's actually got this lovely uh, lady in his life with children and everything. So he's done the whole kit and caboodle as I call it um, and also of course Gwen Stefani she lovely woman I met I met her a couple of times and she said that she actually she came to one of our a few of our shows um, actually with um, 
some of the members of No Doubt. So, you know, we've had a few 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 people from other bands come to see us over the years, yeah. even before they became so called famous. I guess you know. Right. Yeah. But the band was kind of a, a influence or a favorite of Gwen's. I, I guess so. Yeah. 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 Amazing stuff. Now, tell us about the EP. You know, what is the, the direction of your music today? What are you most proud of uh, achieving with the recording of this? Um, well, the EP I just put out now on iTunes and Amazon um, are not brand, brand new songs, but they're songs that I felt that I wanted to, put, it was time to put these songs out. And also I have other songs um, that I want to put out, but also I'm writing new songs and I've got so many songs that I've, I've got to record uh, in the midst of, you know, all these different things but um the ep has has a much more laid back kind of feel to it mm -hmm. and that was kind of my idea because i um i heard that uh, rod stewart had done a, a jazz album so i kind of figured well you know if rod stewart can do it so can i <laughs> because i've been so busy you know doing songs that i was doing when i was 14 15 16 and 17 uh, and everybody kind of forgot that when I was, um, you know, with the RCA label, I started recording songs for them. And I went through this whole apprenticeship with all their so-called professional writers. Um, and they had people like Lamont Dozier mm -hmm. um, and just loads of people. But some of them I didn't actually click with because they were all much older than me. Mm -hmm. And I was, what, 17, 18. So when I actually had the freedom again to do what I wanted to do, because um, Matthew was the one that started me on my songwriting path. Mm. He's the one that got me to start writing. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the, the guitar player, you know, that passed away. Mm -hmm. um, and it was because of him, really, that I actually started, you know, exploring the idea of writing and um, <coughs> discovering my own, you know, inf interests and influences musically and otherwise, yeah. Yes. And I know it's been... A roller coaster up down over all the years, mm. but uh, you haven't been in the current lineup of Bow Wow Wow. I guess in three years with Lee, what what is your reason? That's not Bow Wow Wow. Yeah. I'm not going to say that it is because it's not. So that's not Bow Wow Wow. That's the bass player of Bow Wow Wow who should actually be going out and playing as Bow Wow Wow or the bass player of, like I've had to do. Um, because he's done the same thing he did in 1983, is all I have to say on that point. Mm. Um, I have a website, AnnabellaLewin.com, where people can go. Um, there's a lot of legal sort of things that I can't go, I can't really talk about it because mm -hmm. of that situation. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, it's just a, a complete, it's, a, it's, it's so sad. I just feel so sorry and sad for the fans because they, they are confused. And I've had to, because of the confusion, I've been... You know, I've been experiencing all the backlash from, from that because apparently um, there were things said about me that were obviously not true. Mm. Um, and it was all done with um, a deliberate attempt to, uh, you know, hijack the name. And I presume the bass player felt that he needed to be the rock star of the band. What, what can I tell you? You know, it's a shame mm. because, you know, everybody in the band has, mm. has a role to play. Um, but what's even more surprising is that Bow Wow was an English group from England and now there are all these different musicians that were not involved in the punk thing and not mm -hmm. involved with anything that was going on with Bow Wow. Yeah. And um, apparently this, the singer, I, I understand, is from another band. So, you know, I think that's enough said about that. But I'm yeah. just continuing what I carried on doing ever since I started in music. It's nothing new to me what I'm doing. And so, but I just have to put my name in front of it sometimes. You know, it depends really on the situation. But I just don't want, my, I just don't want the fans to be confused. And this is of why course. I've done it. You know, otherwise I could go out and, and play shows as Bow Wow Wow also, but unfortunately, all my fans are confused. And they're not just my fans, they are Bow Wow Wow fans. So when I do shows, it's to let them know that I'm still doing it the same thing I was doing you know but I just have a different bass player that's all End yes. story. well with the new shows with the EP what can we expect you know in your band wise now what um, what would the show be like um, well it's pretty much the same as I did before but the difference is obviously I'm older now <clears throat> so I'm having to do things with a little bit more decor in my hope 
Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I'm not the teenager. I'm not trying to be the teenager anymore. <laughs> and um, I've sort of gone through a lot of different evolvement. You know, I've, I've evolved, obviously. You have to. As an artist, you have to evolve. Yeah. But it's like most... Um, most artists, when they get to a certain age, there's a lot of singers out here that seem to be going on with their career. Like, I can't, I can't really comment on some of them, but um, I know Tom Jones, for example. He was a Welshman, and he had a long-spanning career. So, you know, I don't know if I'll be able to, I'll be blessed to go on as long as him, but I do hope to carry on singing because I love singing, and that's one of the reasons why I'm still doing it. Um, the other reasons are because, um, you know, I've got a great interest in the charity situations and mainly to do with the animals, you know, because there's, there's a lot of suffering animals out there and there's just so much, there's so much um, that one can do, you know, hopefully in their own small way, but it's really important to me to be able to, you know, to shed some light and bring some awareness to some of the difficult causes that are going on in the world today because it's it's nobody's you know there's enough artists doing something but there's a lot of other artists that aren't really doing enough I don't know and that's including myself because I'm an independent artist now I'm not signed to a big record label with a big you know deal Um, I don't have the whole team around me I pretty much have to do everything with a couple of people helping me, mm-hmm. you know, with things I just can't do on my own as an in- independent. But people assume because I was in, you know, uh, because I am in the band Bow Wow Wow, um, despite a different lineup now, um, they assume all sorts of things. But there's really no need to, um, you know, try to pretend to be something you're not. That's what I've always thought. And Malcolm did tell me that a long time ago. When I met Malcolm McLaren, he said just to be myself, and that's, I think, you know, the fans have kind of got that a little bit about me. Well, I hope so, anyway. We'll see. Yeah. We'll see. Well, certainly words of wisdom from Malcolm. What other advice do you have to young singers or creative people today? What should they really concentrate on to, you know, develop their craft? Um, well, it depends, really, if they want to just be a singer or if they want to be a songwriter. Um, my first thing would be to have someone around you that you trust and that you actually have someone that you are friends with or can have a harmonious relationship with. Um, Like No Doubt did for 17 years, I understand they were together. Brilliant, brilliant. And then Tony Cannell helped Gwen with her solo stuff and he produced some of that, I understand. Um, You know, don't quote me on that, but I think that's kind of what happened and, you know, I think that's a really healthy situation. They work together, they still work together on and off, as no doubt, but they also do their own thing, which is how I think it, it would be a lovely, um, you know, uh, a lovely thing to have if bands could be less, um, <coughs> if bands could be less um, precious about who gets the attention in the band and focus more on the actual material and what they're doing on stage to make that material work live. I think there'll be so much better music out there, so much more better music out there, if that makes any sense. Yeah, Yeah. absolutely. I know we've lost kind of music in schools, Mm -hmm. you know. The next generation doesn't have the opportunity to make music or have the kind of record labels or record stores to develop your your craft. What, What is your hope for music in the future? My hope for music... Oh, that's a big question, and I don't think I've got any right to answer it. <laughs> Who am I? I'm just a singer-songwriter. Um, but you obviously hope it carries on, and it's been around for hundreds of years. We need to nurture Oh, I think talent. I think the most important thing is for, I think, personally, <clears throat> that if you're in a band, speci- specifically if you're in a band, um, then make it a band. You know, get rid of all the people that interfere with what's going on in the band, because it has to be between the band members and work it out amongst yourselves but also I think it's important to be able to write together as a band Um, I don't think it's fair for other people to take credit for other people's work when they weren't even in the room at the time Um, I think it's really important that if you're going to be the singer just you know decide what you're doing in the band obviously that's it's about the roles in the band Mm -hmm. Um, but nobody's more important than anybody else because that's the whole point when you go on the road and you travel to places like Eureka 
and um, you know all these mid Midwest places, and people have not heard of you. They think you look kind of weird, um, and then you've never sort of said a word to them, but they've heard a song maybe on the radio, but they don't really like it anyway. It's not until they actually see and hear you live that ma that makes a big difference, I think. Um, so my, my advice really would be to, to bands, make it a band. And for them to get, you know, to get more of an understanding of, uh, you know, whoever the singer is, they're always going to get more attention. That's just a given. Um, but it's a crazy, crazy situation to be um, breaking up bands because they have issues because the lead singer is getting the attention. I think yeah. that is crazy. And, you know, you've got these corporations and who, who are trying to... Um, you know, invest in something to help them sell their product, but not not just that. They actually want to have something that's reliable and stable. You know, that they know is going to carry on, which is why another again, you know, bands like No Doubt and the Chili Peppers and you know, good more power to them. You know, yeah. and Gwen Stefani and people like that who have got it together with, you know, on the business level as well as on the creative level. Annabelle, it's been a pleasure. Thank you so much. We can't wait to spread the word and get the new music out there. Well, I have to mention I'm doing a show May 21st, which is coming up this Saturday at Santa Ana Downtown uh, Street Festival, Yost Theatre. And I also have June the 3rd. I'm appearing with uh, Martha and from the motels and uh, uh, Missing Persons. And I haven't you know, been on the stage with... Well, like Martha I have, but not Missing Persons for, since back in the 80s. Wow. So it'll be lovely. That's June 3rd at Temecula. Um, and then just go on AnnabellaLewin.com to find out everything else, but not the other site. Just please look me up, because otherwise the fans will get even more confused, and I'm really trying to avoid that at the moment. I'm really trying to avoid that confusion. Well, thank you so much.